All right, everybody, how's it going? It is Tuesday, October 15th, 2024. And of course, we just finished with week six of the NFL. So it's only natural. It's only the next step. What comes after six? I think it's eight. Just kidding. It's seven. I can't believe we're already almost halfway through the regular season. But here we are. We're at week seven. Um, can't believe it. What a good week we had last week. We went uh, 12 and two, only got two games wrong in the Bears. Uh, we thought the Bears were going to lose. And we also thought that the... Um, that the Broncos would win that game, but the Chargers ended up winning. And then um, I switched off the uh, Saints almost immediately when I learned that Derek Carr wasn't off. So I, I ended up going with the Bucks. I see I picked that in a lot of my comments too. So we went 12 and two, very good record. Um, but before we jump into week se uh, seven, go over all of our picks and all that. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, all that YouTube stuff. It really does help the video do better. And I really appreciate that help. Uh, thank you very much if you do. Also, the most important thing is to leave the comment, uh, leave your picks, leave how you're doing on the season. How's everything going? Are you picking well? Are you not picking well? All those things are very fun to see and kind of keep track of. And, you know, it's just fun to do a little head to head all year. Right. So, you know, just leave them down there. Leave your, you know, leave your thoughts and all that. And I'll get back to you as soon as I have the free moment to, you know, I'm kind of busy, but I can get back to things as soon as I can. So, um, Every comment gets answered at least once. So anyway, let's jump into it. Week seven, uh, real quick, our pick em record at thanks to our 11 and two week or our 12 and two week. I can't believe I did so good. Um, we are now up to a 51 and 41 overall record. Very good. We're finally 10 over 500. We really needed a week like that. We were at 500. So getting the 10, getting 10 over is pretty good. So hopefully we can have another week like that um, because, but there is more games this week as only one or two teams are by. So only one less game. So we have a little bit of a longer video we have to do. And there's a lot of really good games this week too. This is actually a really good week of football. So this is going to be a hard week to pick them. A lot of good games, a lot of football, very good week. Two Monday night games, too. Again, I think they're going to slowly do that now, do two Monday nights, and I think they're going to move away from Thursday, and I think Amazon's going to get the other Monday night game in the future. How that? I think. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, Thursday night football. We have to get through that first. The Denver Broncos head to New Orleans, so Sean Payton heads back to his own stomping, his old stomping grounds for a revenge game. The Broncos are one-and-a-half-point favorites with an over-under of 36-and-a-half. Um the broncos are coming off of a loss as are the saints they both kind of took some big l's uh but we'll see how this plays um basically both teams are kind of led by rookie quarterbacks and this is going to be spencer rattler's second start um it's going to be drew uh it's going to be bo nix is like what like seventh start already so he's probably a little bit more comfortable a little bit more ready to go and i know that rattler had a few good moments in that game but a lot of that was set up by the tampa bay buccaneers making mistakes giving the saints a lot of short fields and a lot of opportunities when the bucks quit making mistakes uh, the saints offense dried up and wasn't able to do much and then it swiftly got blown out so it was one of them things where it's like that was an offense that was given a lot of opportunities and did take advantage of those and utilize those very well. Now they're going up against a team that's going to be a little bit better coach, um, a little bit better with the, with not making as many mistakes because the offense is a little bit simplified. And again, we're going to see Sean Payton going crazy trying to win this game against his former team. Um, I don't know. I like the Broncos to win this one. Not really a game anyone's probably caring too much about. <laughs> Uh, here's another game everybody's going to care about. You know, everybody should care about the Patriots taking on the one in five Patriots taking on the one in five Jaguars in London. <laughs> That's going to be a record setting um, viewing audience. Probably Jaguars are five and a half point favorites for some reason. I'm not really sure why, even though they've I think they've only won a game by three points. Uh, we we've, we've won a game by more points than they have uh, over under of 42 and a half. Uh, the Patriots coming off a loss, though, Drake may did outperform cj stroud save for one lucky interception uh, and a fumble but hey they both had drake may had more yards than cj stroud a better completion percentage you know 18 of 27 is better than 21 of or 20 of 31 more yards same touchdowns the rookie outplayed the mvp candidate and again if you're using score in the year of 2024 to determine what team played better what team is a better team if you're using things like record um that's weird. You should use raw statistics and individual performance like they do in other sports to determine how good. Uh... Anyway, I got the Patriots winning this game. I don't really have a real analysis for two one and five teams. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to go with the Patriots. I think they're a little bit better than the Jaguars. And I think with the random inclusion of Drake May being like the new focal point, I think that's enough to give the Patriots a little bit of an edge. And I think playing a team that's nowhere near as good as the Texans if the Patriots can replicate what they did last week, they could probably beat the Jaguars. 
This is one of the good games of the week. Again, there's a lot of them. The Seattle Seahawks take on the Atlanta Falcons. Falcons are two and a half point favorites with an over under of 50 and a half. Seahawks coming off a loss. Falcons coming off a blowout win. Um, and the way I look at this game is I think about the Seattle defense and how they've been giving up a lot of points, right? 36, 29 to the Giants and 40 to the Lions. Um, they have a lot of injuries on defense. I don't know if those have been solved. I think they're still kind of reeling a little bit, not quite fully there. Um, so again, we'll probably see a little bit of a lapse in their defense. And then with Atlanta, their offense has been a lot hotter lately. They've been playing, they've been getting hotter each week. They've been looking more in sync, a, a lot more chemistry. Things have looked better and better and better, more in simpatico. Um, that means more like in sync, basically. Just everything's in symmetrical. Uh, things are looking better. They had a get right game with the, the Panthers where they were able to stretch things out, get fully acquainted. I think when a team plays a bad defense, um, they're able to kind of formulate and get their offense completely on the same page in real action game time. Now they're going to go up against a defense that's not much better than the Panthers due to injuries right now. Um, and again, I think Seattle's defense offense will keep it close because they have a very good offense. Um, but ultimately, I think their defense sells them short and Atlanta can take the win. Uh Plus, they're at home, so I kind of like that. If maybe this was in Seattle, I might lean the other way, but I'll go with Atlanta in this one basically because of the defense of Seattle right now. Uh, the Tennessee Titans take on the Buffalo Bills. Uh, Bills are eight and a half point favorites with a 42 and a half uh, over under. Um, the Titans lost uh, and they're one and four. They lost to the, the Colts 20 to 17. I don't know why that was so hard to say. And the Bills beat the Jets on a, on a second straight Aaron Rodgers game losing interception 23 20. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the Bills in this one. Don't really got a lot to say about it. Um, could the Titans keep it close? Probably not. I guess so, because anything could happen any given Sunday, right? Uh, but I got the Bills. Cincinnati Bengals take on the Cleveland Browns, the Battle of Ohio. The Bengals are four and a half. They do two of these a year, but Bengals are four and a half point favorites with an over under a 43 and a half. Both teams coming off. Uh, well, the Browns won their game 20 to 16 or the Browns lost their game 20 to 16 and the Bengals won their game. Sorry. Sorry. A little bit of a tongue slip there. 17 to seven Giants or the, the Bengals won theirs. Browns lost. There we go. Um, effectively, I, I would go with the Browns in this one because again, the Bengals have been kind of playing shitty football all year, but the Browns just don't have an offense. We've seen the Bengals be able to score, be able to score at will. They can score on good defenses. They're able to at least score some points in a game. Whereas with the Browns, it's like the only way that team scores is on like special teams, defense, team making mistake. Basically, if the other team makes a mistake, the Browns seem to be able to get points off of it. But otherwise, they can't generate points on just a straight drive, it feels like. And I feel as though if you're playing a team like Cincinnati, who is pretty competent, they don't make a ton of mistakes. They're sort of able to rectify mistakes. They play decent football. They can generate points on drives. They don't need mistakes to make their points happen we can kind of see like okay so the Bengals should be able to win this game against the browns team that just is dead on offense gonna go Bengals. if the browns suddenly get an offense they'll probably win this game and win a ton of games but until that happens i think deshaun watson is thoroughly cooked oh shit ah uh, i don't i don't care you can see this next game who gives a shit uh the houston <laughs> the houston texans take on the green bay packers i'm not really going to talk about that next game very much the packers are two and a half point favorites with an over under of 47 and a half texans coming off that win versus the patriots we talked about the packers beat the, the shit out of the cardinals 34 to 13 um this is going to be one of the best games of the week. actually that's very distracting um the <laughs> the texans uh this is going to be one of the best games of the weekend right we have Two very good young teams with very bright futures going head to head. Very kind of similar teams, right? They play kind of similar offenses. They play similar styles of defense. So it's kind of interesting to see them kind of going head to head like this. It's kind of going to be fun to watch what happens and what falls out. Um, the reason I'm leaning Houston is effectively, and I know this is going to sound a weird reason, but again, in these kind of close games where the teams are very even, you have to look for something that's a little different. And I think this might be the thing that gives Houston a slight edge. Um, when I, when I see it, uh, I see uh, the way I see Houston start games is they come out hot, firing right away. They try to win the game early so that way they can play run. They can run the ball, sit on the run, make your team go into the throwing situation, which I think they're pretty good at defending. And they're very good at the run stuff too. So they kind of force you to throw it, force you to play from behind, make riskier plays. Because again, they come out hot and then they try to run the ball for the rest of the game. Pretty sound strategy. A lot of teams played like that. Um, whereas the Packers... 
I think they try to, but they always seem to come out kind of slow in games where it takes them a quarter or two to kind of rev up and get going. And then they usually start firing on all cylinders um, and they're able to usually overcome teams because most teams don't have the offensive abilities the Packers do. At least that's kind of the vibe I'm getting from the this year from these two teams. Now, when those kind of two situations go head to head, that puts the Houston Texans in favor of the way they like to play the game, whereas the Packers have to play catch up all game, which, again, they're comfortable doing. It's just that I think with the offense as prolific as Houston's, they can keep scoring and keep themselves ahead throughout the game. If they have to, they won't take their foot off the gas in this game like they can do against other teams, which allow comebacks a little bit. Um, they know that the offense they're playing is going to be hot on their heels the whole game, especially as it goes on. So again, they'll probably be able to keep ahead just a little bit throughout the game here. Whereas again, it's a slow start for the Packers. That'll kind of probably be the thing that gets them a little bit in trouble and unable to kind of keep up and keep it going. Um, you know, and I also just kind of trust Houston a little bit more than I trust the Packers at this point. I think I hope that makes sense. It's a very comp complicated reasoning. Uh, but anyway, we have the Miami Dolphins taking on the Indianapolis Colts. You probably already see I have the Colts winning. Uh, Dolphins coming off a bye, so they'll be kind of rested, but I don't think it matters. Colts won against uh, the Titans 20-17. to 17. Colts are favored by 3.5, and, and I'm going with the Colts basically because I don't really think the Dolphins, until they have Tua back, have a viable enough offense to win a game. Um, they may be able to do like defensive work and keep it kind of close, uh, but effectively... The only reason they beat the Patriots and the fact that they're two, not one and four right now um, is because the Patriots had the weirdest touchdown taken away where the guy got a toe tap in, taps the first foot, taps the other foot. You can see it clear as day. And then they called it out of bounds. Not really sure why, but you know, hey, whatever. So I'm going to go with the Colts in this one. Uh, here's another game that could be game of the week is the Detroit Lions taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Vikings are two and a half point favorites for some reason with an over under of 49 and a half. I guess they're home in five and oh, so they're getting some respect. Vikings coming off a bye, so they'll be well rested, ready to go, ready for that white hot Detroit offense that just destroyed the Cowboys, put belt to ass, really just, just destroyed a team. Um, so in this one, I like the Lions, right? Um, not really a surprise there. You know, I, I'm a fan of the team, but I think this goes beyond that. And the Lions are playing very good white hot football, and that's something you can't really discount. Whereas if I remember right, the Vikings, the last time we've seen their offense, the last two games, we've started to see a little bit of a decline. They're still winning games. They're 5-0, and obviously, and they're playing pretty good. But again, we haven't really seen that kind of... What we've seen early from Darnold is kind of starting to go by the wayside a little bit. And again, Darnold's been playing good, but he's still made mistakes. He's thrown picks in games. He hasn't been exactly perfect. And I think with Detroit's defense, what we've seen out of them, especially their, uh, the safety duo of Kirby and Brian Branch, their, their corners are playing very well, especially Davis, who's probably going to be able to go. Um, so I'm thinking of those things. I'm like, all right, the Lions should be able to kind of at least a little bit control the Vikings offensively. And I think the Vikings should be able to control the Lions a little bit offensively with the way they play defense this year and the way they get after the quarterback. Um, so again, we're kind of looking at that. Plus, you know, we have to wonder how the Lions defense may look without Aiden Hutchinson. Are they going to be able to survive? That's something will remains to be seen we'll see they have a very good coaching philosophy next man up they have very good players they draft well so we'll see how their depth is um my biggest takeaway from this is we have two very good teams they're going head to head and it comes down to if this game if the defenses break down what offense do you trust more to make the to, to, to keep it going and keep it consistent i kind of trust the lions right we've seen them play in kind of big shootouts with a team like seattle where they were outgained but they still scored 40 points and seattle only got 29. So again, you can kind of see where like, even if both offenses are just scoring at will, do you trust what team do you trust to make a play on defense? Well, we've seen what happens. The Lions do step up and make plays and shut it down. I know Minnesota did that against Green Bay. Um, what was that like Love's first game back? Uh, things weren't exactly smooth as the Lions are right now, scoring 40 in back to back games. So again, what offense do I trust more? A little bit the Lions. Um, I think they have a better track record of consistency and again their quarterback isn't sam darnold playing on a mirage um and again i kind of i just trust the lines a little bit more i think the vikings are a bit of a mirage if we're being honest they're one of those teams this year uh i may be wrong but hey who knows very they have the best receiver in football but i think the quarterback is um slowly unraveling so we'll, we'll leave it at that right as a sam darnold expert i know what i see the Eagles take on the Giants. Eagles are three-point favorites with an over-under of 43 and a half. Eagles coming off a win. Giants coming off a loss. I got the Eagles winning. 
I'm not providing a lot more um, analysis of that. I just think the Eagles are a better team. I think the Giants kind of got lucky playing the Seahawks with the Lions. You know, whatever. I'm going to go with the Eagles. I don't. Oh, another game that's funny. Uh, the Las Vegas Raiders take on the Los Angeles Rams in another potential game of the year. Uh, Rams are five and a half point favorites with an over under of 43 and a half. Rams coming off a bye. They're one and four. Raiders coming off a beat down by the Steelers two to, uh, uh, 32 to 13. And they're two and four. I'm going to go with the Rams. Um, I think the Raiders are in disarray. I think they're in chaos right now. I don't think they have good, a good locker room. I think things are messed up. Quarterback situation's weird. Offensive situation's weird. Defense is starting to kind of collapse a little bit. I think Antonio Pierce might have been a mistake. I don't know. Can't really tell right now. I got the Rams. Carolina Panthers take on the Washington Commanders. Unfortunate matchup for Carolina. Commanders are seven and a half point favorites with an over under of 52 and a half. Commanders coming off a loss. Panthers coming off a loss. Commanders loss wasn't as bad because they kind of played the team that they're modeled after in the Ravens. Um, again, that was that was kind of an obvious one, right? Like the mini Ravens lost to the big Ravens. Ah. <laughs> uh, but the Raven, the Commanders are a very good team. They have the Rookie of the Year, in my opinion, with Jaden Daniels, at least to me at this point. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think the Commanders will be able to score pretty easily on this Panthers defense. That's not very good. I don't think the uh, the Panthers will be able to score very much as they typically don't do. But I think they'll be able to like hang around like 20 points range, whereas the Commanders can get around the 30 range, which is sort of the average range of score for these Panthers, it seems like. Could they possibly hang around... I don't think so. Here's one that's probably going to have a bunch of Chiefs fans like, why didn't you pick the Chiefs? You know they're going to win, right? Like Maybe. Uh, 49ers are one and a half point favorites with an over under of 46 and a half. Didn't really need to introduce this one. It's the Chiefs taking on the 49ers. Revenge game at Candlestick or out at, I don't know if it's still Candle. I don't know what the hell they call their Levi Stadium, I think is what they call it. Um, I don't know what Candlestick is. Is that the baseball one? I don't know. I know it's Levi, I believe. Either way, they're playing it out in San Francisco. Um, Chiefs are 5-0 and off a of bye, so they'll be well-rested, ready to go. But I think they're still injured to high hell with no one really playing on offense of any real note. But Juju Smith, shoot, Juju Poop Shooter. And, uh, you know, the boys. Humpty Dumpty and... Reem Hunt and everybody. Uh, and, the 40, and the 49ers are pretty decent. I think they're getting healthier. I'm not sure. Either way, I don't know. I like the Niners here. I like the revenge aspect of this. I think the 49ers defensively can take advantage of the weak Chiefs offensive options that are there. Um, I don't think the 49ers are going to wilt in this game like a lot of other teams do. I think they kind of have a good idea of how to deal with Mahomes, especially with the lack of weapons. Um, I also think that Mahomes, um, I believe he's one of the leaders in turnovers this year, if I'm not mistaken, or he's way up there. And I, uh, that kind of indicates to me a lot of the teams they're playing aren't taking advantage of the number of turnovers he's doing and kind of letting them make mistakes and not punishing them. Whereas the Niners, with the way they're coached, the way they play football, if they get a turnover that electrifies their team, they go like absolutely crazy and they tend to take advantage of these things and score. Like it gets the, like they, they tend to really live off of like mistakes the other team makes. Uh, that's kind of like their, their fuel anyway. Um, and I think if that happens, the 49ers can take this. I think it'll be close. I think a potential mistake, 49ers take advantage, win the game late. Kind of how I'm feeling with that one. New York Jets take on the Pittsburgh Steelers for Sunday night football. Jets are favored by one and a half for some reason with an over under of 37 and a half. Um, Jets coming off their second straight game losing interception by Aaron Rodgers could be a sign. I don't know. Uh, the Steelers are coming off a big win, 32-13. Congrats to Justin Fields and the Steelers. Seems to, have, seems to have been a natural match. Steelers defense finally has a quarterback they can go out there and ball out for them in the way that they like. Team's playing really well. Going up against the Jets team that's in disarray. They didn't even have the magic. Like, most teams win their first game after firing their head coach midseason. Jets couldn't even pull that off. That's how bad things are. People want to be traded. The offense is out of sync. The defense is kind of starting to get angry. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of falling apart. Very funny to see. Everybody hates the Jets. We'll go Steelers. Monday night football. Two games. 8 p.m. We have a, one of the best primetime games of the year, and the Ravens taking on the Buccaneers. Ravens are three and a half point favorites with an over under of 48 and a half. Um, Ravens coming off a win. Tampa coming off a win. So when I think of this game, I like to think of the fact that 
the Ravens, uh, the Buccaneers just played a 51 to 27 game in which they made a ton of mistakes and allowed the Saints to stay in that game, come back multiple times, take leads in that game. At one point, it was like 27 27 because of the Buccaneers making mistakes and committing turnovers and doing dumb shit with the football. If they do that against the Ravens, they'll probably lose this game, right? Like, I don't, I think. You, you you can't do that to a team that isn't led by a rookie quarterback because if they make all those mistakes the ravens will score on all of those and they'll also score on their own possessions which is something the saints weren't really able to do they weren't able to like lead drive generating points the ravens are capable of doing that if you have the turnovers they will score on those as well right so you're potentially giving up like a lot of opportunity for the Ravens and I think the Buccaneers have done that a lot this year where they play weird football for like a couple quarters where they're just turning the ball over dumb coaching decisions bad luck mistakes mistakes and then they play the rest of the game very very sound if they do that against the Ravens they will find themselves down by like a big score and then have to make their way back in which the Ravens tend to do they let teams come back however um, I think it'll be too big of a thing kind of like with the command like you know what I mean I think the Ravens have this because of the Bucks tendency to make mistakes all right this is the last one and i'm not spending a lot of time on it <laughs> nine o'clock eastern standard the second monday night game the chargers take on the cardinals chargers are two and a half point favorites with an over under of 43 and a half chargers coming off a win cardinals coming off a loss cardinals don't really have a good defense right now they played pretty solid offense but even now their offense isn't great their defense hasn't been great they've been getting shut down by everybody i think the chargers defensively shut this team down score a bunch of points pretty solid easy win for the old chargers on monday night all right that's pretty much going to do it um hopefully you guys enjoyed that hopefully this sounds a lot better looks a lot better than the first try because this was the second take uh so hopefully you enjoyed it leave a like if you did subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and all as always make sure you leave your picks down below it helps out a ton uh makes the video do better and i also like to see how you're doing like to see what your thoughts are what your picks are um see how everybody's thinking about the week so again thank you so much for listening if uh and as always, if you enjoyed it, you know, thank you. Uh, if you watched all the way through, have a good rest of your day, night, morning, mid-afternoon, mid-evening, that time between 11 and 12 when it's not quite morning or afternoon yet. Uh, whatever. Whenever this video goes live is a weird time. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. Have a good rest of the of whenever. Have a good one. As an, as an And as always, it's go Lions, go Tigers, and go Patriots, even though they suck. See ya. Have a good day. Bye-bye.